So the other day I was hanging out with some fellow YouTubers on the internet. Like we were hanging out on the internet, you know, not in person. I wish I had YouTubers here in person. I wish that was a thing. Anyway, I was hanging out with these fellow tubers on this call and there was a lot of talk around YouTube growth and how to grow on YouTube and how to make the algorithm happy and all the things. And I feel like I shared several nuggets with them on that call and it made me realize that these are not things everybody knows and that if you're trying to grow on YouTube, there might be some key things that you're missing that are causing you not to grow slash some key things you're missing that if you incorporate them could make you grow. So let's talk about some secret strategies so you can grow on YouTube, shall we? Hello, what is up? Have y'all missed me? Like, tell me the truth because I have missed you. This summer has slightly kicked my booty in multiple ways, in good ways, in bad ways, in just very neutral ways, in like time ways, and it's been a little bit of a butt kisser, okay? And because of that, I haven't been as consistent here on the tubes as I would like to be. Um, but I miss you, and I promise I'll be more consistent moving forward. That's the plan anyway, so let's hope we can. Okay, so before I really get into the actual tips, I mentioned that like I talked about all of these on like a call with other YouTubers and I would highly recommend, highly recommend that you find peers who are in very, very similar places on YouTube to you and connect with them, become friends with them, try and meet up with them, whether virtually or in real life. If you're in a bigger place than I am, hopefully real life, because it is so energy giving. It is so energy giving to have people who know what you're going through, to have people who understand the day to day of your day to day, to have people who are also like, oh, why are my views down right now? Or, you know, whatever. And even if you don't get together with them on the regular, having somebody you can text and be like, hey, are your views down this summer? What is going on? Can you look at my most recent YouTube video and tell me like maybe what's not okay about it? Is, is so freaking powerful. And by the way, you need these people at every level of your YouTube journey, of your creator journey. And sometimes we get little glimpses of that. And recently, Peter McKinnon put up three videos all at the same time. And actually when he did it, I was like, oh, I could use that as an example to be like, hey, look, you know, YouTube doesn't generally love this, but Peter McKinnon can do it. So like, maybe we could, should all try, which is not how I'd phrase that or advise it, but he put up these three videos, it was promoting the new Canon camera, and one of them was like a, a fun, like behind the scenes of a photo shoot that he did with a friend with the camera. And I watched all three of them. I could care less about a Canon camera, but I watched all three of them because I love Peter McKinnon. If you've been here for more than two minutes, you know that. And I watched all three of them, and then I noticed that within a few hours, the one that was like behind the scenes of a photo shoot was down. And I remembered have, like when I went to click on them, it had significantly less views than the other two that he had put up. And so he took it down because he was like, oh, that's not doing well and I really want this to do well because he worked really hard on it, right? And he waited about a week and put it up again, but he restructured it and did it a different way. He told the story a bit of a different way when he put it up again. And it definitely still does not have the same amount of views that a Peter McKinnon video normally has, which is really interesting. Like, I wonder what about it. Like, he does some videos about all kinds of stuff. Like, his loyal viewers are gonna watch the things, and so that is interesting. But I guarantee Peter went to a group of his friends and was like, what was wrong with this video? What should I do different? What do you think we could do differently to the editing and the storytelling of it to make it a more compelling video? And if you don't have those people in your life, that's really hard to do. So anyway, back to the point of this video. All right, I've got five secrets for you today. Cinco. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco secrets. I don't know how to say secrets in Spanish, but you get the point. And I say secrets, and they are secrets, but there are also things I have told you, I personally have told you like a million times. So just, you know, for clarification purposes. <laughs> All right, the first secret here is to really, 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 really understand YouTube SEO and keywords. Now, that does not mean that your goal is to get in search because I actually don't think that search traffic is your best traffic to grow a channel. But you really, really have to understand SEO on YouTube and keywords and how to choose them and what is best for you and all the things. And I've done a million videos about this, so I will make sure I link those below. But 
this knowledge, this power that comes with knowing about SEO and knowing how to use SEO for you and for your channel is like one of the keys because if you can utilize these keywords, you can get found in search, you can get found in home, you can get found in suggested, and that is how your channel is gonna grow. Because here's the deal, y'all. If you do not use keywords, YouTube doesn't know what the hell your video is about. And so many people approach keywords in the wrong way. So many people, especially in the beginning of their YouTube journey, are trying to go after keywords that they could never rank for because as a creator, they're too small or because the keyword is too small or whatever the scenario is, okay? So you've really gotta get a good understanding of keywords and SEO here on YouTube. Again, I've done a million videos about that. I also have a membership where you can learn all the YouTube things. So it's 29 bucks a month. It is like quite literally the most easy way to learn the YouTube things. And I talk in depth about keywords and SEO and things like that. And a lot of the other things we're gonna talk about too in that. So I'll link that below too, but it's called Crash. And you can go to crashforcreators.com to join that membership and learn the things. All right, second thing, second secret YouTube growth strategy thing, okay? And that is trend hacking. Oh, this is one of my favorites. And again, I have done tons of videos about it. There's tons of information about this inside Crash, like lots of things, okay? But trend hacking. What the hell is trend hacking? Well, first of all, I made up the term. But anybody who teaches YouTube or talks about YouTube will probably talk about this, but they're probably gonna call it something different and I just call it trend hacking. So that's what we're gonna call it today because that's my word for it. And essentially what this is, is going to other people's channels and your own channel, okay? We can't leave out our own channel, and seeing what has done well and seeing if you can hack that and use it to your benefit on YouTube as a video. So super easy example. For me, if I go to my channel and I go into my analytics, I can see that I have a couple of videos that have been doing really well for me this last month. And one of them is a digital product video, right? So if I recreate or do a very similar topic, like a sister topic to that, or a different take on that topic, it will likely do well, okay? That's trend hacking. So if you go to a competitor's channel or someone you want to be like or the same niche that you want to be in or whatever, and you see that they've had a video three months ago that got two times the views that their videos normally get and seem to do really well, and it's a topic that you want to talk about too, put your own spin on it, talk about it, title it similarly, and watch yourself be able to kind of ride that trend that they picked up. Now, there's nuances to this. If you have zero subscribers, you probably can't you know, come to my channel and be like, oh, she talked about this and it did really well for her. I'm gonna do a video about that and it's gonna blow up. Probably not. But you can go to people with 500 subscribers who had a video that did really well compared to their other ones and see if you can trend hack that. There's also some nuances around the amount of time it's been since a video did well on somebody's channel. So for me personally, on your own channel, this is so much easier to see because you can see what is currently, like in the last seven days, last 30 days, whatever, doing really well for you on your channel and you can trend hack into that. Whereas on other people's channels, you just kind of have to guess because you can't see the insides of their analytics. And so when you're trend hacking somebody else, I recommend the, you know, the newer the video, the better. I wouldn't go past like a year or even some, in some cases, six or nine months to a video that did well longer than that because odds are it did well then and it may not do well now. But again, there's lots of things about trend hacking inside Crash, so if you wanna learn, it's linked below. Oh my Lord, y'all. So this is a big one. Number three here is a big one. This was a really big topic of our conversation the other day in that group where all of this came out and that is to be yourself and show yourself. So, so many times, especially if you're starting like a how-to channel or something like that, people get stuck in this, I'm supposed to be this certain way. I'm supposed to talk this certain way. I'm supposed to be in this certain space. I'm only supposed to deliver the information and I'm supposed to get out. And people get stuck in that big time and don't show any of their personality. They don't talk to their people. They don't let you know anything else about them. And that is going to create a channel that people only come to to solve a problem through search or whatever, and then they dip out. 
These are not going to be loyal watchers. These are not going to be people who come back for every video. So going back to my Peter McKinnon example, again, I could care less <laughs> about the Canon camera that came out. I am a Sony user through and through, but I watched every minute of all three of those videos he put out and I've watched the one he put out twice, twice, because I wanted to see what else he did. <laughs> I wanted to see what he did different. And that is because I love him. Like I love the way he creates. I love his content. I love everything about his channel. And I love how much he shows his personality and all the things in his channel. And that is why I do that. The same thing with somebody like Sarah Dietschy. Sarah is a tech YouTuber. And there's a lot of the tech that she talks about that again, I couldn't care less about. I, you know, I don't use PCs. So when she talks about PCs, who cares? I'm pretty technical minded and she is more technical minded than me in a lot of things. So there'll be videos that she does that I'm like, I really don't care about this, but I watch them anyway because I love her. She put up a birth story video on her main channel where, you know, she talks about tech. I am 11 plus years past having a newborn baby, right? I had my kids at 24 and 27 and um, I am not in newborn baby phase anymore and don't plan to be ever again. And so the topic itself wasn't something I cared about, but I cared about her. And that video did really well for her because her viewers care about her, even though they come to watch tech videos. So you've got to be you, you've got to bring you and you've got to show you. And I know that can be a little bit hard because we want to just sit here and be like, here's step one, step two, step three, step four. And a lot of people are like, well, how do I do this? And so much of this is, you know, bringing the camera with you, going out of your environment um, and, and, and really just inserting things in conversation that you normally would. For me, it is very freaking normal for me to be in the middle of a point and be like, oh, there's a cow outside. Or um, to be in the middle of a sentence and be like, oh, that was a Gilmore Girls reference and I didn't even think about it. Or to get like a new Stanley Cup and just like talk about it because it's cute. This is not new. You guys have seen this hundred times, but you get the point. That is what you're gonna get from me and with me in person, in real life, all the things. And so that's what I need to bring to you here. And so while I did grow my channel initially doing those, you know, how to eight minute videos, blah, 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 blah. I really figured out in 2020 that that was not gonna get me where I wanted to go with my channel. That was not gonna get me the subscribers who care about me, the growth I wanted, um, and the things like that. And so I really started incorporating even more of me than I had before. I'd always done it, but even more of me. And that is how I've revived my channel several times and how I think I've grown throughout the years pretty consistently. BT dubs, um, take a good look at the office because it's about to uh, have a major makeover and I'm really excited about it. Um, but uh, this will be one of the last videos you'll see with this, probably not the last one, but anywho, the fourth thing, the fourth thing that you need to do to really grow on YouTube that not enough people are freaking talking about is to get really good at and create really good thumbnails. Y'all, thumbnails are 75% of the battle. Now, that's probably exaggeration. Like 75% is a little high, but it's a huge, huge piece of all of this. If you do not have banging thumbnails, thumbnails that grab people's attention, thumbnails that make people want to click and watch, and then content that matches that thumbnail and makes them want to continue watching, none of this is going to matter. And as I've said 10,000 times already in this video, I have a ton of videos about thumbnails. I will link them below. Crash has a ton of content about thumbnails. You can learn how to make good thumbnails, but it is that important. It is so freaking important. And what's really cool is that now we have resources like Canva and stuff like that, that you can be a designer without actually being a designer because they make everything really freaking easy. So like for me, when I first started on YouTube, I was creating all of my thumbnails in Photoshop. You know, if I wanted to like cut out the background and make my head, you know, on a different background or like move myself from the background or whatever, I would have to go into Photoshop and like trace around my head and like pull myself out and do the Photoshopy things. And now in Canva, you can literally just be like magic grab, pop or remove background, done. <laughs> like 
It's so easy. But I see that so many people still struggle so much with thumbnails. And y'all, what you need to do is you need to go study other people's channels. You can learn from my previous videos. You can join Crash and learn in there. But you've got to make your thumbnails better or the rest of the stuff that you do won't matter because nobody's clicking and nobody's watching. And it won't matter that you figured out the SEO and you trend hacked and you're yourself in the video if literally once people see the video in their home feed or their search or their whatever, they don't click. So thumbnails are really important. And last, but most definitely not least, is to get really good at storytelling, even as a how-to channel. I was gonna do like, even as a how-to channel, but one time I did that, which I just did, so you know, but one time I did that and some girl was like, hey, warning, I have migraines. You gotta warn me. What? I have migraines too. And like, everything on the internet does, does can't come with a warning for what might possibly trigger somebody's migraines. Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, get really good at storytelling, okay? Storytelling is so important even in how-to videos. Storytelling is so freaking important, okay? If you cannot cohesively hook someone's attention, deliver information, keep them around, keep them coming back, then you cannot grow here on YouTube. Now, I've done videos about storytelling. Other people have done videos about storytelling. Again, I'll link them below. There is some information about storytelling and Crash, but you've got to get good at storytelling. If you are not good at storytelling, you will not keep people around. If you're not good at looping things together and, and, and making something that people want to keep watching, you will not keep them around. Think of it like a movie where 10 minutes in, 20 minutes in, whatever, you're like, this is so boring. Or would they get to the freaking point? And in a movie, it's much harder to dip out because, I mean, if you're at home, you can just turn it off. And if you're at the movies, you can just get up and leave, but most people don't, right? And so it's much harder to just like, eh. Um, but here on YouTube, it's really easy. If you don't hook and engage those people within a few seconds of your video and then keep them engaged throughout the rest of the video, it is really freaking easy for them to navigate over to the right of their screen and click another video. Navigate to the left and click their homepage. It is really easy for them to leave. So you've got to get really good at storytelling. Okay, so again, I have done a bajillion videos about each one of these things. SEO and keywords, trend hacking, being yourself on camera, thumbnails, storytelling, all of it, okay? So I'm gonna make sure it's all linked below. Also, all of those things expanded on and at a higher level are in Crash. So I'd love to have you inside there, especially because um, it's about to get really exciting in there. You get like a secret podcast where I'm going to answer your questions and give you like, you know, tips that you've probably never heard about YouTube. You get a community of other YouTubers it's so much fun. So if you want to join Crash, it's 29 bucks a month. It's like super easy and it has everything you need to grow on YouTube, quite literally. And that's just crashforcreators.com and I'll also make sure I link it below. And stay tuned. I have so much good content coming for you. You remember how I said, like I was blowing up the business a couple videos ago? And I haven't really done a lot of videos since I said that because summer has been crazy, but I've been blowing up the business in the back end. And I've also blown up the business to the point where the way I thought it was going to go is not the way it's going and it's going in a different direction that I'm even more excited about. And I can definitely talk more about that another time, but you're going to want to stick around because I have some content that I just, you're going to love so much. We're going to get an office makeover. We're going to do the things. So, um, I'll see you around Charlie Brown.